Incidentally, I got a really good story to tell you on special topics day that you don't want to miss, so see to it that you're here on Thursday. Um, today, uh, I've got to walk up front this afternoon uh, about 2 o'clock, go to a meeting. I don't know how long the meeting will last. That doesn't mean necessarily you all need to leave because everybody's in here an adult. You know how to work without killing yourselves. So I may be gone for a few minutes, but I'll be coming back. Yeah, just make sure you keep your safety glasses on. Don't drop anything on your foot. Jack stand under the vehicle if you're jacking up, that kind of thing. Let's start with electrical test six here. A non-reversing permanent magnet motor drives the windshield washer pump. Well, that depends on the vehicle. On some of your Jeeps, you have two washer pumps that were hooked to the same motor, and it would spin it one direction whenever you would wash the windshield in the other direction when you wash the back glass. So if you wash the rear glass, it would just the pump would just work backwards. So that way they didn't have to have two pumps, you see. You'll have to put up with my hiccups because I got some today. Motor circuits are powered only when the ignition, the ignition is on. Well, that first one, the answer key says true, so go with that, but that's not true on every wiper motor. Um, I mean every washer motor. And it says motor circuits. Are powered only. There we're talking wipers. Say fault. Wipers and washers, or other kind of motors. That is fault. Which motors can you think of that will work with the key off? Come on, Quincy, give me one. Ford. There's two motors that I can think of right on the top of my head that will work without you ever turning the key on. We're talking electric DC current motors on your vehicle. What has happened, you guys? Who are you guys, and what did you do with my real crew? Okay. Huh? How about the power mirrors, guys? Power mirrors. Yeah, they'll work without the key on. What about power seats? They'll work without the key on. I was thinking wipers. I'm like, what vehicle? Well, I was saying and DC other DC current motors, you know. But your for some of this is wipers, but some of it's not. Most windshield wiper circuits have two brushes designed for two-speed operation. That's basically a falsy there, but I will tell you this. If you see a, every single day i got to look for my I didn't take it this time. Every single day. Who took my marker? I'm going to have to dip into my supply, I guess. But anyway. If you, you got this right here, you see on the schematic, you see this representing a motor. You know what that? You know why they draw that that way? These are brushes, and that's the commutator. What you're doing is this is a little motor. You're looking at the end of it, and these little commutator segments right here that you see there, those are basically what the brushes slide across to give you a direct motor. It's up. Operation, you have permanent magnets around the outside. However, you're going to also see some that look like that. So that means there's another brush for another speed. Now, whoever wrote this test talked about that, but if you see a two-speed motor, you may see one with a brush here and a brush here. If you power up this brush, the motor runs at a different speed than if you power up that brush. You got me? You understand what I'm saying? You understand how these com commutators work, right? Yes. Are you all commutator people? All right. Uh, the express down feature allows for windshield wiper blades to travel to their normal park position at the base of the windshield before the motor stops. True. That's actually false. I'm going to go with false. Did you know that a lot of these uh, wiper motors uh, on some cars, basically, when you turn off the wipers, the motor reverses direction, and that's how it puts them down. However, if you had to design windshield wipers, you know, and you'd have a windshield wiper motor operating a little, they call it a little transmission or whatever that up, it's these wipers, but I want my wipers to go all the way down and park when I turn off the wiper. So how am I going to make that happen? When I turn off the wipers, I don't want to have to time it and make sure they're down when I turn them off, although, you know, I've driven some vehicles where I had to do that. Anybody know how that works? They don't have to be on some type of cycle thing. Spring well, that's technically sounding. <laughs> I mean, uh, They're going to have to be on some kind of cycle I thing. Mean, Very good. It's going to have to be a, uh, I don't know how to explain it. But whatever is on, when it goes, it's going to make a complete movement. Yeah. 
Now you're going to have to design this from mm -hmm. scratch. And they're paying you some good money, so you got to come up with something that really works well. That's what engineers do, you see. Ain't that right? All right, let's <laughs> plop this off. Let's do it this way. Why don't we do it this way? Let's take my, I'm going to make a, a brass slider. It's going to go all the way around, and it's going to have a place where it's open. And I'm going to run power into that brass slider, and I'm going to run power out to the motor. This power is going to be on any time the key's on, and it's actually going to be bypassing whatever power is coming from the switch. So you turn it on, and this brass thing moves. And every time it comes around to the park position, this power is going to be interrupted. So when you turn it off, this is going to keep power to that motor until it comes to an open place, and then it's going to stop. See how easy that is? Now some of them, eons ago, used to have a little set of points and a little cam. But it has to keep providing power to that motor until it comes to a certain place, and then that's the place where it's broken. That's why, how many of you guys have ever gotten in trouble whenever you pull wiper arms off, and then you had your motor on and they were up some, and then you fooled around and didn't think about it and put the wiper arms back on all the way down when they should have been up here? index the wiper arms wrong if they're going to try to go and park when there's no way, when they're already, in other words, they'll, they'll have a quarter of a t turn to go oh, when you've already put them on the bottom. You know, you're talking about blades, you're talking about the, No, the actual, because you do a lot of blades over at O'Reilly's probably, oh, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. But the whole arm, did you know I had a Crown Victoria I worked on, it's one of the state cars, Jim Crudup's car, that he drives that Crown Victoria that's got about 320,000 miles on it. And he said that when in the wind, whenever you're driving down the road in the rain, it would not clean the glass. But you could wash the windshield with a windshield washer and it clean it just fine. We put new wiper blades on there a couple of times, and then he said it still don't clean good. <gasps> so I got, excuse me, cups, I got the doggone uh, a new arm, a brand new arm, and I put that on there, and he said that's all it needed. I can't fathom that. Well, they got the spring tension, the spring yeah, Seemed strong on the other one. But anyway, I just went ahead. When I changed that out, I took care of it. So keep that in mind. If somebody's complaining about that, so let's just change the arm. You know, it's nothing particularly mysterious about that, but you have to be willing to go that and pay that extra money. All right. So most small engines are serviced by replacement only. I think that's supposed to be small motors. That's what it is. Well, I guess. Small what do you think? True. Yeah, that's true. Wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, do you ever fix a small engine? Well, what are you talking about? Lawnmower engines? Electric motors. Why are they saying yeah, engines? Say Why do they say engines? Yeah, I exactly. Don't I don't know. Yeah, I didn't write the test. Good. That's irritating whenever they write a question like that. Because what in the world are you supposed to think, you know? The electronic controller, stepper motor, solenoid operated clutch, and drum gear and strap are components of an electronic vacuum cruise control system. That's false. I got a cruise control somebody needs to work on today, by the way, and I'm going to show you the tricks for working on that particular kind of cruise control. The dark blue Crown Vic that we did our state car spent inspection, the cruise is dark. It doesn't work. We've got to figure out why. Ain't really that big of a deal, but you got to make sure you got your ducks in a row before you condem condemn any parts. All right. All right. Let's see here. There's Four possible modes of operation for both types of cruise control. That's true. Four yeah, anybody that's driven a car with cruise control can answer that question. I don't even know why it's on the test. Failure to tap up or failure to tap down are the most common problems with cruise control systems. False, usually it's failure to engage. Now, my friend Mark was driving a Jeep, and they said that it wouldn't cancel the cruise. When you hit the brake, the cruise wouldn't cancel and so he drives it and drives it and drives it, and every time he taps a brake, he cancels the cruise, and he just gets goes, you know, he just gets real comfortable with this thing. Then he's out here on the bypass, and those Jeeps got that four liter in them with 177 foot pounds of torque. That thing's in its power curve; you won't stop it when it breaks. He tapped that thing, and it didn't. Uh, he had a tendency to get excited and lose, you know, in panic. Tapped the brake; it didn't cancel. He's coming up on traffic. He taps the brake; he stands on it harder, and the cruise control says, "I don't see any cancellation." command, I think, since we're slowing down, I'll apply more throttle. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's standing on the brake with both feet and holding on the steering wheel with both hands going, ah, and the Jeep's doing a burnout out there on the bypass. <laughs> Smoke boiling out around the tires and all. 
no oh, crap well they figured out what was wrong with it after that but most of your cruise control system got redundant stuff that you know in other words if this failed that will still cancel the cruise and you know this thing that they saw about the troopers talking about don't use your cruise control on a rainy day or it'll think you're going slower and it'll cause you to lose control you ever seen those emails think think about that how in the world is that possible if the only way that would be possible is if the cruise control is getting its speed information from the wheels that aren't pulling. And they'll come make the tires spin more. Well, no, it's actually getting the cruise control. It's got information from the tires that are driving the car. If it was getting it from the front wheels and the back ones were driving the car, it might happen. Yeah, but if the, if the, if the tires are not keeping up with the speed, then it's going to make the car speed up. The tires will, though. I mean, why wouldn't they? They're going to turn. Now, what you're talking about would be valid if it's drawing its speed information from the front wheels. But it, I mean, you know, if it's being driven by the back wheels and it's, if it's being driven by the front wheels or the back wheels, the driving wheels are the ones that provide cruise control with its speed inf information. But cruise control is designed. If, if you put it in cruise control, if you go up a hill and the car starts to slow down, it gives the car more gas so it'll pick up speed. Mm-hmm. If tires are spinning, then they're... they're it's they're actually going to read a faster speed and it's going to let off. Well, that, well, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Now, yeah. if what they're, I mean, what they're saying would only make sense, let's say that I was drawing my vehicle speed information from one of the front wheels and the back wheels were pulling it, mm -hmm. and back wheels started to spin and the front wheel slowed down, yes, maybe, mm -hmm. then. But I don't know of a single car that I've ever worked on that uses the front wheels to read speed and the back wheels to drive the car. The people that make cruise control aren't that stupid. They're not going to make it so that it's going to do that. Now, that's a sort of an urban legend, and I don't know. Somebody may have thought that's what happened. I don't know. There's a lot of reasons you can hydroplane. You know, a lot of people, my wife, she don't trust cruise control before she can sling a bull by the tail. She just hates it, but I use it every day, you know. Are the wheels spinning when you hydroplane, or are they just slide? They're basically, when you hydroplane, you get on top of the water, and when you turn the wheel, yeah, when you turn, you're on top of the water, it don't matter what the wheels are doing. If they're spinning or sliding or whatever, you're going wherever the weight of the car is carrying it. Yeah, but does that affect the cruise control? Well, the cruise control basically is going to be trying to do things, but it ain't going to be what caused that. You know what I mean? The cruise control won't be the cause of it. The cause of it was going to be because your tires will go out. And it ain't pumping the water out and keeping the tire. You know, if you got good tires on the car, you're not going to hydroplane anyway. And most of the time, unless you're like a dummy, you drive 60 miles an hour in the water, you know, eight inches deep, you may have a hydroplane. It's, I've hydroplaned before, and uh, it's no fun and all that kind of thing. When I was a kid growing up, we used to slide around curves and do handbrake turns and all that kind of crap. And if you did, yeah, on purpose. And if you did a lot of that kind of stuff and you knew and you, it was a lot e easier to remain calm if you start to lose it. You just kind of know what to do, you know. But, I mean, people that ain't never done that, I mean, they're, ah, they, you know, terrified. And you know these Toyota, Toyotas they were talking about, it would run away and kill people a while yeah. back, up two or three, several years ago. Yeah, and and uh, they got push button start. You know what you do to shut one of those cars down? You just hold the button like a computer. Just yeah, hold it three or four down. seconds and it shuts the car down. Well, apparently they didn't know that or they couldn't think fast enough or they were like, oh, we're all going to die here. And then they all died there, you know, because all they were doing was trying to keep it in the wind, you know. You ever see Capricorn One? Yeah. That movie called Capricorn One. You remember when that guy goes there and get in his muzzle, little Mustang that he had, a little '65 Mustang, and he got in that thing and he's driving off and he's just sort of zoned out. Next thing you know, he notices his car's going faster. He did everything that you swore you would do. He fooled with a gear shifter. He tried the park brake. He tried to switch the car off, and all he had was steering and speed. And it kept getting faster and faster and faster. That scared the daylights out of me watching that movie. I mean, all that because you think, I mean, just golly, you know. He would go through an alley. There'd be cars, and he'd go through an alley like that, and all them cars, beep, you know. That is, woo. That was a, if you hadn't seen that movie, it's a good movie. But that's only one moment. Anyway, how did I get off on all that? Anyway, failure to tap up and tell it. Most airbag systems use two crash sensors. That's really not true much anymore. Most airbags use this. Most airbags use something like this nowadays, the ones that I've seen. And they've got this one sensor, and this thing's going to be mounted like on that Ranger. It's actually mounted in a way with this arrow pointing ahead. Hear that? And that right there is what closes that. And they used to, they have a gold ball, gold, excuse me, gold plated ball, and it would break loose from a magnet and it would roll down a little tunnel and it would connect a couple of wires together and you'd have one on both sides of the airbag. 
Well, one day at the Chevrolet place, this guy went and bought a ignition switch, a lock cylinder for his little Geo, whatever it was. I'm going to pass that around and let you look at that. Anyway, uh, that's got the cover pulled off so you can see it. It'll have a silver cover over it. He pulls the airbag and the steering wheel and all that kind of junk out to replace that lock cylinder. He puts all that back together and he pinches one of the wires going to the airbag. Pinches one of them. So when he turns on the key, the airbag module says, I need to see if I've got a good airbag. So it shoots a little bit of current up there to see if it'll come back out of that airbag. It goes up there, it comes back, it finds ground, boom, like a big boxing gloves. It punched him in the face, he had a big raspberry on his face and all this kind of stuff. Turn on the key and that airbag blows, that'll make you not want to work on your car no more. Those all right. are expensive all right. too. Yeah, they cost about a thousand bucks depending on which one you get it from. Uh, we light one off out here every now and then. We'll put some wires out in the parking lot. That one light off. I've seen them jump 10, 12 feet here and fill the whole parking lot up with smoke. Uh, supplemental restraint systems are also called seat belt restraints. Yeah, that's false. They're actually, uh, what part of the seat belts has got that uh, airbag stuff in it? There's an airbag. There's a little thing down here. Yeah, the seat belt has got some airbag stuff in it. Right here. See this? This right here oh, is off of a 2000 drop, Crown Victoria. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little squib right here. And you notice these yellow connectors and airbag stuff it typically has yellow connectors on your newer model cars. All right, whenever your airbag lights off, this little thing right here locks that reel and keeps you from going forward. They call it a pretensioner. And just about every airbag system has got this on it. That Sonata has got air, airbags in the uh, every pillar and all, yeah, it's got all over the place. I mean, if you, you know, it's got airbags everywhere. The ones that really help you are the ones that pop up out of the seat and keep your head from hitting the pillar when you get T boned. You know? well, what's the, uh, what makes like seat belts be locked when you're just chilling in the car? Like He's talking about that You extender. know what I'm saying? You mean whenever you pull the seat belt? Oh yeah, well what's happening there, it's an inertia thing. And if the, if the car is stopping, that little thing in, in this little reel swings and latches. But if you're, it's just dangling like this, and if you, if you don't, aren't doing that, you can just pull it. And it'll, it has to be a sudden motion though, right? Yeah, it's basically, you can hit the brake and it'll go thunk like that, and that's basically what that is. But this right here locks it no matter what. You know, basically it locks, and that way if you're tumbling around, bouncing in the car and all that kind of stuff. And there's one guy that went off the road over on one of them high roads over there on a, a Chevelle. He goes off the road, his name was Eddie Davis. I mean, he went off that road over there, and the car, he's a big, strong boy, and the car flips in over in, and it's crashing, it's smashing, it's doing all this kind of stuff, and the hood's opening and closing and all that, and all the way inside the car, he's holding on to the steering wheel, swinging around everywhere, you know, and he hit the windshield with his knee and broke it, got a bunch of glass in his knee, all. Well, they come to a stop on his wheels, boom, he sat back down in the seat. <laughs> he didn't have no seat belt on or nothing, you know, he just really got lucky on that thing, but you can't count on your ability to hold on hard enough, you know, to do that. Uh, when, when diagnosing direct current motors, you should... A, use a voltmeter or a test light to check for voltage. B, measure voltage drop from the motor to a ground connection. C, uh, check the fuse and circuit breaker. Or D, all of the above. All of the above. All of the above. The electronic vacuum operated system and the electronic system are two types of cruise control, cruise control systems. And uh, number uh, 13, let's see. For safety reasons, to operate the cruise control, the vehicle must be traveling above what? The 35? What do you think, guys? Yeah, they basically, you know, it's like, uh, yo, dude, Joe, where have you been? Been looking at his car with him. Oh, He's I got see. a vacuum leak somewhere. I see. All right, we're almost through in here now. So. Uh, Thirteen. Uh, don't, don't copy anybody's paper now. All right, right we're gonna take. Uh, what's thirteen? Thirteen was B. It says twenty-five, but that's not true on every car because I've seen of them. I've seen some, some of them cancel whenever they were, you know. In other words, when it got to go low 35 on some and 30 on some, it's not the same with every car. Most airbag systems, uh, or most airbag systems, what is it that inflates the bag? Is it hydrogen? No. It's a solid propeller. That's, that's bad, Huh? It's, it's a nitrogen gas. Yeah, it's a propeller of some kind, though, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's a squib in there, but I mean, it, you know, that's all that. I mean, this, this is basically, these questions are so generic. 
that you could probably, you know, answer answer every one of them wrong if you're talking about different cars. Uh, the the person that wrote this test wants you to put A, but Those aren't soft either. yeah, they're not. And basically, they don't continue. They don't keep. They don't trap the air. Keep it there. But as soon as they light off, they let it out. Now, you know what's the dumbest thing I've ever seen that they do, and for some reason or another, customers. When they first put airbags on, they would put the horn, you know, little buttons up here above the steering wheel. But the problem, people didn't like that, so they just kept starting putting the horn under the airbag. When you see yourself coming up here about to hit something, you're laying on the horn, and then the airbag lights off while you're laying on the horn. It sounds like it's dial. I've never heard of that happening, but it seems to me like it would, oh, boom, you know. So you break your arm or something, tear your shoulder off, sorry. Number 15, horn switches are located where? On the steering wheel or on the steering column. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Do you guys like horn switches? Are they good? Are they our friend? No. If a horn don't work, what do you do first? Check the horn. Well, listen to him. What I like to do if a horn's working, excuse me, if the horn's not working, is I go under there with a test light and I get right there at the horn, I see if any power is going to the horn. <laughs> most of the time, it's, the yeah, the most of the time the daggum horn's bad. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes you'll have a fuse or a relay or something like that or a clock spring. But uh, what we used to do Those years ago. High side controller, right? Huh? High side? That's yeah. Where the switches on the high side? No, it's going to actually usually operate a relay. Uh -huh. it can't, it, ordinarily, it'll ground it. I mean, you'll have a ground, the horn. The reason they usually switch the ground side is because there's fewer, there's not as much of an arc there when you switch the ground. But uh, you don't hardly ever see a horn that's uh, high side switched by the switch. Now, the, the relay will high side switch it. You know what I mean? But the horn switch is actually typically going to provide a ground to the uh, because they're going to have you're going to have a little arc whenever you're breaking the positive side. Okay, let's look at our vocabulary match here. You guys got a pretty good vocabulary. Y'all got a back of a test there? No. Well, never mind. Forget the vocabulary match. I hate those anyway. So this test I've got, I, I deliberately left it off of your test so that you would remain ignorant. So, what? Not really. I don't do that. Okay. Ask. Okay, we're all done.